Hey everybody, I'm Levi Wright, the Assistant Director of Prospective Student Services here at OSUIT, and we're thrilled that you're joining us today as we have a live virtual tour of our Power Plant Technology program. We're very excited to go through this, but first I want to let you guys know if you have any questions throughout this tour, please feel free to put those in the comments and we will get those answered towards the end of the video. We want to make sure to get you the information that you want and you need, so make sure to ask those questions. Even if you're watching this later on when we're no longer live, you can put questions in the comments and we will still reach back out to you with the answers to those questions. If you have any friends or family or anybody that you think would benefit from seeing this, please feel free to share it with them as well so that they can enjoy it too. With that being said, I'm going to turn it over to our instructor and let him take over. Bob? Hello everybody. Have you ever wondered what it takes to put electricity out onto the grid and get it into your house? And have you ever wondered what the typical power plant, how it serves the community? How many people can you really impact if you're working at a power plant? Well, my name's Bob Pope and I've got a degree in engineering and about 40 years of experience in the business. And I want to explain a little bit about that today for you and show you what we do here at OSUIT to prepare you for career in power plant technology. As I said, uh, I've got about 40 years in the industry. The slide's a little old now. Uh, most of it's spent working for a company called General Electric. Uh, I've working for General Electric, I've taken power plants apart. I've taken new power plants and put them together. I've taken power plants that are broken and fixed them. So I've, there's not a whole lot of stuff that I haven't done with a power plant. And so I've worked for General Electric and then up till the time I came to OSUIT, I worked as a plant manager at a plant just south of Kiowa, Oklahoma. And we took that plant from a beginning plant, just equipment laying on the ground, we put it all together, we started it up, and we've run it, and it runs to this day. This is one of the largest power plants in Oklahoma, and it serves, actually serves people in Dallas, Texas. So, uh, one of the things you saw on that slide was that I was a member of an advisory board, and what I want to talk to you about as an advisory board is that at OSUIT, we don't just pick up books and teach technology. We partner with industry, and industry tells us what their needs are and what it's going to take uh, to work in their plants. And then we, with the engineering degrees and those that teach, are going to take and put the science and the technology behind that for you, the student. So this map shows us just some of the people that are involved in the state of Oklahoma with our advisory board. You see that OSUIT is kind of central to a lot of different plants. And one of the things we can do with that is we can grab access to those plants. So we can take a field trip and within a day, we can go up, have a lesson and come back to, come back to uh, campus. And as you'll see, there's quite a lot of people there that actually do support the program through uh, through the advisory board. So what am I going to talk about today as far as what it takes to do a power plant? Well, a power plant that we're teaching in our program, and we're going to take you through all the different modes of generating power, but the power plant we, we focus on mostly is what's called the combined cycle power plant, and it uses two pieces of equipment that are key to that. The first is a combustion turbine, which is this blue part, and the second, and well, the exhaust from that combustion turbine goes to a boiler that makes steam, and then that steam runs a second part of the combined part, a steam turbine that generates power. So the gas turbine's making electricity, the steam turbine's making electricity, and then all that heat that we get from the gas turbine, we don't spend any fuel on. So this is kind of the preferred technology that you'll see in today's power industry. It's efficient. It's responsive, so if we've got wind turbines or solar or something like that, that that needs to be supplemented, we can turn these things on real quick. We can uh, start them up in the morning when everybody's getting ready to go to work, and then we can ramp them up when the air conditioners come on, and we can do lots of different things with them. We can start them up and shut them down on a daily basis. And so the technology that we teach is that, and we'll just give it a, sh a short run around here, this is a virtual uh, representation of it that we begin to use to show you what all is involved in the power plant. So we had the gas turbine, we had the HRSG, we had the steam turbine. We need a cooling tower to cool off 
the steam to get it back to water so that we can get it back to a uh, to the boiler and as this thing will go around here it'll show you some of the other things now one of the things you're going to need to do as a power plant operator is you're going to want to know within the plant that you're working in how do you find all that stuff this could probably be five ten acres that you're going to have to roam around and so somebody could call you and say hey a particular filter needs to be changed or a pump's not working or something of that nature and you're going to have to know where it is so one of the things as a power plant operator that you have to do is you have to know where things are and there can be a lot of things to know within a power plant. This is a very simplified representation of a power plant but it's good enough to get you started and uh, to get you uh, off and running. The other thing that's distinctive about our program is that we use some virtual to, uh, to talk about that but we actually take the actual information that's in the power plant, the actual drawings, the actual books, and all that and teach you how to use those. So you're going to be using the same material that the people in the power plant use and you're going to be able to access that and get the information that you need to know. Um, there's a strategy to that, there's a logic and an organization to that and we're going to teach you how to, how to read those drawings and how to understand how that works. So when we look at that, to get there, this is the curriculum that you'll use in power plant technology. It goes through six 15-week periods, so that's a, perf that's a period of two years at OSUIT. We have two periods here that we start in the fall and we go fall and spring, and in these first two periods here, we're going to teach you just basic technology. How does a motor work? How does electricity get routed? How does it get connected? Things of that nature. How do pumps work in mechanical sense? And we're going to give you an introduction to power plants also. Hence the introduction to power plants. We also have a course here that's key for the everything you do from then on, and it's called PNIDs. That's how to read the drawings that you'll the key piece of drawings that you'll find in a in electric, any kind of power plant or any kind of oil refinery, something of that nature. Uh, we'll take you through, like I said, electrical, mechanical. We'll talk about computers. Power plants use your basic PC computer in a lot of different ways. Uh, businesses in general use it in a lot of different ways too. They communicate by email. You write reports through Word. You uh, collect data and analyze it through a spreadsheet. So we're going to take you through the power plant versions of that and help you understand a little bit more about how a computer works. Uh, another thing that we have to do with uh, power plants is we have to talk. We have to know how to treat water. We usually get our waters out of a reservoir or a river or something like that and it's usually full of dirt and fish poo and leaves and everything else that we've got to clean out of it. So we've got to know how to, first of all, get the water out, what to do with it, and then we've got to figure out how to clean it. So we'll go through that. So those first two periods there, you're going to learn basic technology. That gets you some of the base knowledge, and from there, we put you into what's called an intern. An intern is a paid position in a power plant. You'll go through an interview process, you'll send out your resumes, you'll go explore and look for opportunities, and you'll go through just like you're going to get a job for an internship. And then you go through that, you get an intern position, you'll go spend a paid time in a power plant, and you'll apply some of that. It's almost like an apprenticeship program. Once you get through with that, we bring you back to campus for one more 15-week uh, period, and we start to get into what I'll call the weeds of the power plant business. We'll look at the regulations that are involved with that. We'll look a little bit more <clears throat> about the electrical, and then we'll start talking about how to operate a plant, and then get into more of the specifics about uh, the plant equipment that are in, that's in the power plant. But when you get through the, this next semester after the internship, you see I have this shaded. This means that all these classes are available online. So you get through this period, if you want to go test the job market, and see if you can find yourself a job. You can do that, and if you get a job, you can complete your degree online. So all the money that you spent back here is starting to get paid off now as you go through that. We, this particular year, we have 20 students that are going to be graduating in this summer period here, and out of those 20, probably 15 are working right now, paying their way, paying it off, okay? And uh, so they've got their entry into the uh, to the job market, they've got their career off and running, and life's good. So that's the, just the general overview of our curriculum. 
And again, I'll just reinforce it by saying we're not, we're using textbooks to some degree, but we're going to use the actual plan uh, documentation, the technical information, and our goal here is to give you the most realistic learning environment that we can give you, okay? Now, with that said, power plants are essential businesses. The people that do that have got to come to work every day. If I don't have that person who can run that power plant available, if he's sick or he's, if he's in the hospital, somebody else has got to take his place. And in a pandemic situation, if everybody starts getting sick, then there's nobody to take your place. And we got a problem because we can't run a power plant. So at this point in time, our power plants are in kind of a lockdown. That's not to say we don't have any access to these power plants, but we have limited access and we have to be careful with the way we do that. So one of the things we've done here at OSUIT is we've kind of expanded out and looked for other resources that are going to help us dovetail the real world in with some of the more uh, uh, theoretical, if you will. And one of the ways we do that is with a simulator. So we've got a small, simple simulator that represents a combined cycle power plant. So just as we saw before, we've got a gas turbine, we've got a boiler, we've got the steam turbine, and we've got the cooling tower. And th that little movie you saw represents what you see with this screen. This uh, screen is on one computer. There's maybe 12 screens total that show you how to run the whole plant. And you can go through and you can learn how to start a combined cycle power plant from zero state and get it all the way up to running where it puts out the uh, power on the grid. <coughs> Here's just some more examples of the, uh, of the environment. This is showing the gas turbine in detail. This is showing the HRSG or the boiler part of the machine in detail. And so the simulator is combined with the real world environment. So you learn how the plant's running, you learn how to locate stuff, and you learn what it looks like, okay? And as these movies finish, we'll take it to the next step. The next step that we go with this in is from here, we go to the real world. Now the real world, the virtual is good because it shows you how to find things. But the real world's going to give you some more information. So when we start this movie, let's see what other information we can get out of this. Don't know if you can hear it, but out of the computer, there's, there's noise coming out. So this thing's running, so it's making noise. And if you look over here in the, in the lower right corner, you'll see a pickup truck. So now you got an idea how big this HRSG or this boiler is. It's about five stories tall. So as a plant operator, you're going to be going up and down that five stories tall. We're about 50 foot away from this machine, so you see it's probably three or 400 foot long. Nah, maybe not long, maybe 200 foot long. And you'll see the gas turbine represented here by this big box, which is a big air filter, the generator underneath it, and then the most, probably the most recognizable piece in here is the HRSG. On the other side of this unit is a, another one, just looks exactly like this, and it runs a steam turbine. Okay. If you remember back at the beginning, I asked or posited how many people can a power plant affect? Well, this particular unit right here that we just saw will provide power for a quarter of a million people. Okay. So as you as a power plant operator, you and a guy in a control room through that simulator are running that power plant and you're providing electricity. So just as we have a simulator with the theoretical part and now we've got an environment with the real world part if we'll turn around here we'll show you our latest addition to the program and this is a real world combined cycle simulator so you saw in this in the theoretical we had one screen and that was what you interfaced with now we have what 12 14 screens 15 screens if you count the alarms and that's what it takes to interface. A typical control room operator will sit in front of those screens and manipulate and operate the power plant. One person will do that. So within this program, you're gonna learn now the real world, you'll have the real world environment for that operator. One of the aspects of a power plant operator system is that when you go to work in a plant, you go to work as an entry level operator and then the more you learn about that plant, the more you learn how to find stuff, how to operate stuff, how to make things work, 
and stuff like that, the more money you get paid. They have what's called a qualification process. So it's not just going to work and then hopefully someday you get a promotion. No, it's what you can put your nose to the grindstone to, what you work from, and you can work through different qualification levels till you get to the point where you get into the control room. An entry level person in a uh, power plant is going to make roughly 25 to 28 bucks an hour, which translates to about 50, 60 grand a year. These jobs have a lot of overtime that can be built into them also. And then as you progress up, you get more two or three dollars an hour at a time as you progress through these operational qualifications. And when you get to the point where you can run these screens over here, you're going to be making upwards of 40 to 50 bucks an hour, which is touching a hundred grand a year. That's nice trucks, that's boats, that's your house, that's a career. So if power plant operation is something you think you might be interested in, please give us a call. Uh, contact either student recruitment or myself at bob.pope at okstate.edu or Paula Harold at paula.harold at okstate.edu. Thank you. Excellent. We do have a couple questions. One is, what opportunities for women are there in this field, and have you had some women come through the program since you've been here? Yeah, the program has, has quite a few opportunities for women. We've had five uh, women graduate from the program over the time that I've been here in the six years that I've been here, and I'd say maybe one or two of those that have graduated are actually sitting in that, in that chair over there in the uh, control room. Um, the program has a lot of diversity to it too. We, we generally draw from students that are here in uh, Oklahoma. But, and uh, another group that really seems to like this program is veterans. Uh, there's a good team atmosphere that exists in a power plant and it's kind of like the unit that you would have in a, in a military operation. So veterans like it. Uh, we have just a lot of people that are you know native to Oklahoma or in the area of Oklahoma that have gone through the program. So we have a little bit of diversity that way too. Excellent. Now, we know that you put a lot of effort in um, over here on a grant. Can you tell us a little bit about that grant and what opportunities that's going to create for students here at OSUIT? Yeah, last year we identified an opportunity from the National Science Foundation to obtain a grant. It's kind of the entry level of grants. They have their own kind of tier system. And we were awarded that grant last month, by the way. So we're Starting next month, we're going to have the opportunity through the National Science Foundation to, number one, expand on this uh, curriculum that I just showed you where we have the real world versus, and versus the theoretical world and how to bring that together more. So we may have plans for a virtual wall with some more interactive type stuff, or we're definitely going to have a, an opportunity to expand on how much access we do with the plant and, and kind of relate that between the two simulators. The other effort that will go on with the grant is that we're going to be uh, taking a, a, um, a listening approach to what is it going to take uh, or what is it about the business that would be appealing to either a woman, a person of diversity, a person of cultural differences. Uh, in the past this has been a been somewhat of a, a, a cl not closed but a, a more focused uh, demographic and just the way of the world and the way things are today that uh, this is a business that's growing. This is a, a, a business where there's a lot of people that are going to be exiting the uh, business for retirement and to be honest the pool to replace them isn't as big as it used to be. So you've got to, you've got to expand the outlook to that and so for you, any of you out there, this is an opportunity that uh, you'll have and I can't think of anywhere else that you can go for two years, graduate with a degree, make the money you're going to make, and, and just have this, this life. It's, it's pretty impressive. Um, one more thing to, to, to follow up on with that in that uh, this is what's called shift work. Power plants are going to run 24 hours a day, 365 a year, so your job is going to be somewhere working in that. And, by shift work, I mean there will be a period of time where you're going to work from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. at night, and then there's going to be a period where you're going to be working from 8 p.m. at night to 8 a.m. in the morning. So you're going to have to teach yourself to sleep during the day. Uh, power plant people don't abuse themselves with that, so you usually have a day or two transition time if you're going from day shifts to night shifts. So you don't usually just 
work right over and, and kind of burn yourself out. And then it'll be, there will be times where you're going to be working on the Christmas day uh, and some of that. Uh, being an hourly wage, though, you're going to be making double time for that that day or double time and a half sometimes. And so uh, it works out well in that regard, too. You're making double time. You're going to be going to have a little bit better cri under the Christmas tree for stuff like that. So um, it's a kind of a give and take thing. If it's something, you, again, you feel like you can... Uh, you can live with or you might be interested in, give us a give us a contact and we'd be more happy to to help you. Excellent. Well Bob, thank you so much for uh -huh. your time and, and your knowledge on this program. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And like I said, if you have any questions that you want to get answered after this is over, go ahead and put those in the comments and we will definitely get those answered for you. Make sure that you're following the Friends of Pete on social media so you can keep up with these as they go and make sure you stay safe and go pokes.